because we, we don't live in those categories of things that we can see outwardly in a lot of people. And so we'll look at that and we'll look at certain things because of what we've seen on TV and what we've seen in, on, on our social media, what we've seen. And, 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 and those things are absolutely sinful there. And sinners bring those things past them. We need to be careful not to always look at these sins that we see in the world and avoid the things that we do in our own lives that are opposed to the nature of God. In other words, if, if we're going to go and, and, and we're going to talk about the sins of, of abortion, the sins of, 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 of the LGBTQ, the, the, the sins of, of things like that, let us not forget there are other things, those aren't the only things that are opposed to the nature of God. You see, there are things that are opposed to the nature of God when we look at sin that all that impact all of us. And you may not be involved in any of those things that you're seeing that the news stations are fighting about, but we have to also be careful that that we don't allow ourselves to get in sins of, of, of anger, sins of unforgiveness, sins of bitterness, sins of sins of of, 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 of manipulation, sins of of, um, of of grudges, things like that. All those things are opposed to the nature of God and by definition would qualify as sinful behavior. And so we have to, as, as the body of Christ, again, the number one thing impacting the church world today is still sin. It's not what's going to take place in November, folks, in the election. What's going to take place in the election in November is a byproduct of either sin or righteousness. Okay? That's what happens with that. Um, and, 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 and in fact, what, what, we, what we see is we, we've got to understand um, that our relationship with God is tied to these areas here that we've got to continually, continually, continually be cleansed. Folks, I, when, when you read the Lord's Prayer, and I hope you've been reading the Lord's Prayer every day, um, and He tells us that we need to have, we, we need to be forgiven. And He tells us that we also need to ask that that we um, not not allow the evil one place in our life. In other words, we we don't want to be walking in sin ourselves. And so they get the prayer of Jabez also had laid that in. So we go with this definition of sin. Where did sin first come into the world? When, who? The Garden of Eden. Okay, I want to ask you this. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, they committed, their, they committed the first sin. Was the, what was the sin that Adam and Eve committed in the Garden of Eden? Was that when they committed their sin? Okay? Was their sin the sin of adultery? No. Was their sin a sin of the LGBTQ movement? No. Was their sin the sin of abortion? No. What was their sin? Their sin was the sin of rebellion. It was rebellion is what it was. It was disobedience. And that's, that, that, that's what we have to see. And so when we see the definition of sin, we find that, the, that, that, that right and wrong in our lives when it comes to our relationship with God is based on obedience or disobedience to God. Obedience to the Word of God or disobedience to the Word of God. Obedience to when the Holy Spirit convicts us of something or disobedience when He convicts us of something. You know, there are things that you in your mind are thinking, hey, I want to do this. The Holy Spirit says, stop, no, don't. And when you do it, what's happened? You disobey the Holy Spirit, right? That's sin, okay? There are things in the Word that the Word clearly tells us not to do. And, and if we don't do that, we're walking in obedience, right? Or there are things it tells us to do, and if we do that, we're walking in obedience. And conversely, if we don't do it, we're doing what? We're walking in disobedience. So that takes us to that part of sin. So we, we see that as important. At the center of sin are human wrongdoing. And let me go, I, I want to explain something to you. You don't hear about the devil and his angels committing sin. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought they were going 
they did rebel against God. They rebelled, they were cast down with no hope of being ever, ever being able to come back to God. They had no hope of it because they uh, were created different kinds of beings than we are. Sin is only takes place in human nature. It's not the enemy's nature. The enemy wants to tempt you and push you into sin and coerce you into sin. But sin is at the center of human wrongdoing, human imperfections, human wicked actions, and human selfish desires. So we need to understand that sin it has become because of Adam and Eve being the first humans committing the original sin put sin in the heart of all humans. You're born with sin in your heart, yes. And there is no degree of sin. Oh, absolutely. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, no. There are degrees. There are, there, there, there are uh, all sin has consequences. But there are, there absolutely are. We, we will actually get to that. But that's a good question. That is absolutely a good question. In relation to other people, oh, can I sin against somebody else? Absolutely. We don't just sin against God, but we can sin against people. Again, in relation to other people, sin expresses itself in immoral conduct, a lack of love, discrimination, and injustice. Oh, what did you realize? That discriminating at somebody because of their race or their gender or their age is sinful. This um, injustice. Um, we want we want injustice, not or we want justice, not justice the way the world sees it, but justice the way God sees it. Okay? And so in other words, we want justice um, with other people. That doesn't mean we're trying to we, we but we want there to be justice in, in, in life, a biblical justice, okay? And again, all that ties to that all that ties to how we treat others. And so so sin can involve how I treat somebody. I don't necessarily have to sin against God, but if I sin against my wife, then I've also then sinned against God. If, as a husband, if I'm an abusive man to her, if I was, she'd already killed me. Okay? Uh, but if I, was an abusive, if I was an abusive man to her, um, that would be an injustice thing. That would be me treating my wife in a sinful way nature. I'd be sinning against her then by context of the fact that I've sinned against her I then have sinned against God. So that's where we see this taking place. So it, 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 these actions they, they involve a person's refusal to live by the standards of moral purity and the show of respect for the rights of others. Okay, In relation to oneself. Can I sin against myself? Absolutely. In fact, probably the biggest amount of sin in your life is against who? Yourself. But again, when you sin against yourself, it becomes sin. Well, how can I sin against myself? Pride. When I, when I raise up in pride, I'm not just sin against God, I've sinned against myself. I puff myself up and pride. Or, or what, about, what about a person who is in the church, the Holy Spirit is convicting them of sin, they refused to go to the altar and get their life right because they didn't want anybody to know that they needed to repent. What did they do? Pride caused them not to get what they needed to from God, which caused them to lose out on that. They didn't just sin against God. They sinned against themselves. So you can sin against yourself, and it also was a sin against God. And so we, we have that, you know, things like um, self-centeredness. Now, none of us would be self-centered. Well, of course, we all have self-centered things in our lives, don't we? You didn't say amen to that. Self-centeredness. I mean, we, we, self-centeredness is one of the major causes for a person to stumble. It, it, it'll be one of your major causes for you to stumble, be self-centeredness. Um, and what happens self centered when I only consider my needs, my wants, and my desires, and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks, then it causes me 
to be and sin against myself and then as well God. Exaggerated self-sufficiency. Now this is one we're Americans. And as Americans we value our freedom. We value what we call the American dream. And the American dream tells us I'm self-sufficient. But we're not self-sufficient. We're supposed to we're all supposed to be codependent. We're supposed to all be codependent on God um, and codependent on each other. No one can exist in themselves. Um, you know, have you ever heard people say that um, I can be a Christian and not be in church? No, you cannot. I'm going to say it again. A person cannot be a Christian and not be part of church. Because a Christian is supposed to be the church, and the church can never just be one believer. The church is not talking about this particular, this, the building, we're talking about the body of Christ. And so it would be contradictory to Scripture. Um, if you ever cut a limb or off of a tree, the tree survives, but the limb does what? It dies because it's trying to be self-sufficient. And that limb can never be self-sufficient, can it? So those are the sins uh, that we see. Sin is rebellion, sin as it relates to others, sin as it relates um, to oneself. There's no area of your life that's not touched by sin. Every area has been touched by sin in your life. I know I'm looking at good people who are about as close to perfect as, as you can get. I mean, you know, they're, they're, yeah, I know that we're not looking at people that are out there um, knocking off the top ten, you know, on the sin list, whatever. But the reality is every part of you has been touched by sin in your life. And even, I, I'm, I'm going to just drop this away, even since you have become a believer, even since you've been saved, I can promise you, you have committed sin since you've been saved. And you've needed to repent since you've been saved. Um... Because the human nature every now and again still rises up. It still, it still wells up in us. Even when you pray, you can pray all day long, folks. And when you get up from prayer, still be confronted with opportunities to sin, and you're going to fail sometimes. There's a difference between not being able to be around people and the difference between allowing hate and bitterness to enter into somebody's life. And the Bible tells us how dangerous a word of bitterness is. Um, there are people that, um, that, that offend me. I turn the TV on and I get offended by some of the things I see. And, and, um, but at this, uh, uh, so I look at certain politicians and the policies that they make, the things that they say, that I, they make me angry. But um, I also, in my heart of hearts, I will look and I say, and, and, and I begin to feel sorry for some of those that, 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 that I believe in opposing views, not just to me, but opposing views to Scripture, that I begin to feel sorry. I pray, God, before they leave this world, give them another opportunity for repentance. I look at the Bible and I see some really nasty kings that God gave opportunity for repentance. You know, so they, I, there's some really nasty people in the Bible that people didn't like, that, 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 that had brought a lot of, uh, of, 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 of things on themselves that God allowed them to repent. And they may not have cured and fixed every relationship in their life. You know, I mean, you take... Take a, um, years ago, I, I can go back and kind of, Sister, um, Sister Rigby, Darlene Rigby, and I mean, you know, she's uh, well up in age, very sick right now. Sister Rigby, when they were pastoring, um, and when they were younger in pastoring, she suffered from bad migraine headaches, really bad. And, um, and she had um, been raised um, by a stepfather who was pretty abusive to her. And 
um, and so at a very young age, she left home, got married real young, uh, when her brother Remy got married. And so she had, I mean, and, and it was hard. He'd been abusive to her, and, and, and it was hard for her. And they had been pastoring for a long time, and um, and the Lord told her to sit down one day and write him a letter forgiving him of this. She couldn't stand. She could not be around. She couldn't take her kids around. She couldn't be anything. And she brought him a letter, told him how much she forgave him, and that, you know, everything. when she did that, as soon as she wrote that letter, sent it off, her headaches lifted off of her, her migraines lifted off of her, but later that man gave his heart to the Lord before he died. So we're forgiving the ignorance. And so, well, I mean, abuse is an ignorance, is it? Abusing a child is not ignorance, is it? Abusing a child is something that is, uh, abusing a child is, is, is generally intentional. Okay? It's not ignorance. And so what happened is, you know, she did that. See, she had held bitterness in her, which which is sin. And But God said, this is how you will release it. And, and she released it that way. And so, but it's, again, there's no area of this. And that's why I said it may be sins like that. And, and I've had that happen in my life. Um, I went through a time of, of bitterness. And, and listen, I... Um, I got, me, I got me a list, and I went down, and and I called every person on that list that I could think of, and 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 talked to them about about different things, and um, about si those situations that I allowed to make me. I said I wasn't going to um, to let that thing um, fester up in my life. I wasn't going to become a slave to that sin. And you talked about the liberty it gave me in my spirit, and um, and and also some relationships that had seemingly been destroyed had been now put back together where, where um, we talked and where um, they'll um, text me for prayer or vice versa and so forth. And, and, and so God would do that when we, uh, we got to get rid of the sin. Of and, and what generally happens is when it comes to human relations, I really have to deal with myself and not have to deal with somebody else's spirit because it's generally, I find it, that it's generally on my part that if I will deal with my spiritual part and I'll deal with my opportunity to, one, get rid of the bitterness, get forgiveness, and give forgiveness, and then let God handle the rest. And you'll be amazed what will happen and, and, and things that can turn around. And I'm talking about, let me tell you, I'm talking about um, some some stuff that's so heavy that, uh, that, 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 that that caused me four months of not sleeping. Not sleeping a wink for four months. And when God allowed me to get rid of it, it freed me up in my life. But it's because I discovered that I was sin in simple thing. And, uh, and, and we have to discover our own sin. Uh, but too many times we're caught looking at other people's sin. And I've, I've been a pastor for a long time, and I've had I've had people call me and text me and and, um, and tell me what somebody else was doing on Bill Street in Memphis uh, before everybody had phones with pictures on them, and uh, you know so the, so I, how they knew that they were on Bill Street in Memphis except because they didn't have smartphones back then and they didn't text back then, but they'd show up on Sunday morning tell me so and so was in um, Memphis on Bill Street. Uh, and my, my, my question was, how did this? But my answer was, I'm not a policeman. You're bringing that, you're, you're bringing that, that accusation. You need to address it. Well, I think uh, uh, yeah. But I think they're wrong. But I think and I mean, I, you know, we even had a stress thing in our family a few years ago that, um, and, and, and it, and, and it was hard. But God allows certain circumstances to come and cure those things and, and fix those things and, and allow us to realize some things that are more important um, than land, property, um, and, um, and family love. So much so that, that in, in, in some of those relationships that were really challenged, and really, I mean, brother and brother and so forth. I mean, it was, you know, and, and it, it, there was, but God allowed those things to the proper perspective on it.
found out our souls were more important than any amount of land or property or more important than any amount of money or anything like that. And Share it in here because of the words that I said 
um, when I wasn't hardly much of a talker as a baby, and, uh, or as a toddler, I wasn't talking. And I was so tired of my older brother, again, not my oldest brother, Brother Billy, but my older brother, my middle brother. You know, middle brothers can be rough. But my middle brother, he was so bad to me. And I was walking down the hallway, and I had my teddy bear, my brother had his duck. And I declared as a, about a four-year-old little boy what me and that teddy bear was going to do to my brother and his duck. And um, he had a, a, a decoy duck. I was mad because my grandpa gave him that, and a dog gave me a teddy bear. And so, um, but that, yeah, uh, well, I don't remember. My mama tells me about it, so now I know. I know when I first committed sin. I know when the time my mama told me, my mom and dad told me to, that if I didn't eat the, the green beans, I couldn't have ice cream and couldn't watch TV when I was about five years old. And I had to sit in, the, in our kitchen on Summit Street, and I had the bright idea to take, that, take those and go dump them into the, uh, into the trash, you know. And I wasn't smart enough to put something over it, you know, and went and said, Mom, my plate's empty. And when... Uh, she looked at it, she took the plate in there, and she goes over the trash can, and then Dad whips me because I had sinned against my mama. And, uh, and then my dad sinned against me. But, um, but we all sin. We've all sinned. That's something we all done. All have done wrong. All of us have done wrong. We've done ourselves wrong, we've done others wrong, and we've all done God wrong. All of us have. It says, and apart from Christ, the most moral person, think about the best person you think you know. They have a past. The best person you know. The most Christian person you know. The most Christian person you know through not Jesus now. Uh, no, don't start thinking about him because there is no dirt on him. But the best Christian you know or you've read about, they got dirt. There's dirt in their life. Thank God he can cleanse that. I mean, that's the thing about it. The bondage of sin is not something that's limited to just one part of the human race. The bondage of sin hits all parts of the human race. You see, we don't think about it when a newborn baby is born and we look at that newborn baby and we see look how perfect and how, how wonderful they're going to be. But really what you need to look when you see a newborn baby, you need to look and say, okay, three or four years down the road when that baby's learning to talk and learning to walk, and when that baby breaks that, that lamp or breaks that um, breaks that little figurine and you say, did you do that? And that baby looks at you square in the face and says, no. That baby started lying right then. And what you've got is a little center in training on your hand. And, um, and, and then we've all been there. We've all been there. My oldest brother used to declare um, when my middle brother, Richie, when he was small, before he could talk, everything that happened, he would say, Richie did it. Everything, Richie did it. Every, Richie did it. And the first words my brother Richie ever said was, Billy did it. Because he was tired of getting blamed for stuff. Now, chances are he did do it. But, um, but that happened. So we all sin. But what fixes it? Repentance. Everybody say repentance. In order to receive salvation. Now what's salvation? That's that new spiritual journey. That eternal journey. That, that, that eternal life that you're going to get because you've responded to Christ. Because you've responded to the call of Christ. In order for your salvation to happen in your life. You can't, you don't just accept Christ, but you have to repent. Accepting him is part of it, but repenting him of it is another part. What does it mean to repent? Sin, we've said, is something, it's missing the mark. It's, it's us being opposed to what God's nature is and, and living in a life opposed to his nature. So repentance is doing this. It simply means to change one's mind. Before, we, we think it means to change in one's actions. But repentance means to change your mind. You can't change your actions until you change what? Your mind. 
this thing that I once was doing because now I have repented. I've got the mindset that says I'm not going to do it. This thing that I wouldn't do, I now have the mindset I'm going to do because the Word says I should do it. You see, that, that's what repentance, repentance covers a lot of things. Did you know repentance is, is simply this? You take a person who never goes to church, they say, I'll never go to church. They give their heart to the Lord and they repent and they go to church. I don't think he ever said he never went to church, but I'm just going to go back about a year and a half. And there's a precious man in this church who came on Christmas and Easter. That's out. But I remember when he gave, got to the, when he gave his heart to the Lord in the altar up here, right over here. And he had to have surgery. He was in the hospital for two months. I mean, a lot of time. And there were people that said, oh, he won't come back to church. That day just... Do you, anybody, does anybody ever watch him walk in this church when he walks in? He bounces. He comes back. And, uh, I mean, he's grinning from ear to ear. It wasn't just a repentant of that part. Where he didn't go on Sunday, now he is on Sunday. And, and he made the statement... Um, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and he said, you know, the church is kind of like a hospital for sick folks. I love that. And, and so that's a repentance nature. It's not just these other things. You say, I, I, you know, I don't want to be a part of it, but yet now I do. You, you see that? that? That's part of repentance is changing your mind, then your actions change, okay? That's what repentance is. It's turning your mind around. You've got to turn your mind around before you can turn your actions around. And so it's that important. Repentance is, it's a 180 degree. It's not a 360 degree. 360 degrees takes you back to where you were going. But um, a 180 degree turn, you're going the opposite direction of where you're at. You're on a, you're on a road going the wrong way, and repentance says, my mind's going to go the right way now. Now, have you ever been lost? Wives, you go ahead and you know your husbands have been lost a time or two before you got GPS, and even since they got GPS, sometimes the little one don't work right. Yeah. Or sometimes people put the wrong address or something like that. We uh, listen. We, we went in 2007. A friend of mine pastored a church in or right outside of Orlando, a town called Claremont. Uh, church I wanted to go, we wanted to go see this uh, service in his church, a wonderful church and I got, I printed up back then, I printed up directions for the church, I had them all on the map and on Sunday morning we got up to go to church um, that's because uh, we were going to go to Disney World the next day but we got to go to church on that Sunday morning and we drove for two hours up and down the road that the church was supposed to be on looking for a church that seats 1400 people folks you should be able to see that from the road. Well, and we're looking for all of them. And, and we got mad at each other. We got, we got, mad, at the, we got mad at our map. I'm mad at all these things. Come to find out in that town, they had two streets that were named the same thing. I didn't get to go to that. And, 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 I, you know, and, and so I was lost the whole time. I never did get to find that church. And then later on, that pastor left that church. I still didn't get to go. And so... You know, I've been lost plenty of times. Worst vacation we ever had. We got lost in Savannah, Georgia. We got lost bad in Savannah, Georgia. I'm not gonna lie. We were all so everybody was so mad at each other in our van. I didn't think any of us were gonna make it home together, either alive or together. And for that one night, while we were lost. None of us liked each other, even the little kids. I had never been to Savannah, Georgia since either, and I'm not going back. I told overseer, I said, if you ever want me to go to a church in Georgia, don't send me to Savannah. I'm not going. But I had to, we eventually got turned around, and we got a little help. We found somebody that came to the store told us how to get where we needed to go. And you know, sometimes we have to have somebody tell us how to get where we need to go. You know, we do. It's called the Word of God. And the Word of God tells us how to get where we need to go when it comes to 
repentance and, and these things like that. The Holy Spirit has his role in repentance. Okay? And he has an active role in repentance. Nobody repents of their own desire. You will not repent until you are convicted. And that's why I pray for conviction. Listen, I got my list. I got 17 on my, my page with him. And, and Brother Ricky, the thing that I asked God, I said, I asked him, I said, God, first I pray that conviction would be on each one of them, that they'd be convicted, that they'd be convicted of their lives and what they're doing right now. Then I ask God to send me, to open the doors for me, to be able to reach out to them. I want to have a hand in, but but I but but it's it, it, it they're, they're, but I pray for conviction because no one's going to repent without conviction. In other words, you repent because you have you know, not because you had me whispering in your ear telling you you're wrong, but the Holy Spirit's in your ear. When the Holy Spirit's in your ear telling you you're wrong and you don't repent, then you're in the danger zone, honey. I said that when I, when I shared the dream a couple of weeks ago in church, and I talked about I talked about the family I saw on fire in that dream. The Holy Spirit told me, as, and I haven't shared the whole thing yet. I still haven't, but the Holy Spirit said, people within churches all over our America, America are in danger of hell because they haven't repented. In reality, all of us are in danger of hell if we don't repent. Not just talking about the first initial repentance of salvation, but I repent daily. Job repented for himself and on behalf of his kids just in case. Repentance toward God and faith in Christ go hand in hand. Repentance and faith occur at the same time. When you repent, that's when you come to faith in Christ. So you say, I admit that I'm a sinner. All of a sudden, I come short of the glory of God. But I realize that I need to repent. So when I repent, God, I'm sorry. Turn my mind around. Change my mind. Because when you change my mind, you change my actions. Then, I turn around, when I turn around, then what happens is I begin to then see Christ, and he becomes my Lord, and he becomes my Savior, and everything changes. You see, that's the power. That's the power. That's why this article is so important. We believe that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that repentance is commanded of God for all and necessary for forgiveness of sin. Who should repent? Everybody should repent. Everybody should repent. And so the reality is our repentance is an amazing thing to help us get to where we need to be. And don't ever don't ever look at repentance as a bad thing. If you see somebody in church and they raise their hand saying they need to repent, instead of wondering what they did, you may question yourself and say, what do I need to repent of? The greatest revival I've ever got to witness personally Every single service did not begin with a song, did not begin with a perfunctory prayer, but the whole church would be called to the altar, and people repented before service ever started. And it went on that way for month after month, and lives were changed at the heart of any true at the heart of any true salvation will be repentance. Bow your heads. You know, as we pray, always ask yourself, God, what do I have that I need to repent of? We all have something 
in our lives? What keeps it from being these big things is by repenting on these small things. God, your word tells us the importance of us coming to you and repentance. The importance, dear God, of us 